Okay, well today we are going to get back to the basics of how to do keto right and keto has been a buzzword since 2015 if anyone knows my story. Um, it was 2015 I was in a car accident and it was a God thing for sure because within three weeks I was introduced to the keto diet and realized that not only is it great for weight loss and all of that that it's being promoted for, but it really got my brain back. I um, was experiencing brain fog, anxiety, depression, so many brain issues. And as soon as I flipped to um, a more low carb diet and a more keto diet and used a keto supplement, my brain was back. And today at the age of 46, I can tell you that brain fog is gone. My brain is working better than the days at Stanford in college. Um, my energy is pretty much wavers between an eight and a 10 every day in the afternoon. I'm, I've got my same energy that I had in the morning. Um, I've kicked the coffee habit in the last three weeks, which has been amazing. I didn't realize I didn't need it. It was more of a habit. It's amazing how the brain tricks you into thinking that you need something because you've been doing it for so long and habits really just take a couple weeks to kick. But with the supplements that you are using, whether it's in the Ascent Diet Cleanse or just a couple of them, um, habits are a lot easier to kick than just in three weeks. We're making you feel good day one. That is the goal. So this is what I want to talk about today is keto has a whole bunch of different colors and shapes and sizes when you listen to the professionals out there. It does not have to be a high fat diet. It is a proven, a proven diet that works really well to get people off of their chronic diseases, off of their medication, reduce inflammation in the body, reduce um, brain fog because you're feeding your brain these ketones in instead of glucose, which is like um, feeding your brain. The, it's like the gas guzzling suburban with a lot of exhaust and waste compared to the Tesla that is clean burning energy. Ketones are a really clean burning energy in the body. And if you go from the standard American diet and say, okay, Sarah, I'm going to just do it without supplements and I'm going to I'm going to do it without the accelerated keto. I'm going to switch into ketosis. It could take up to two to three weeks and you're going to go through hangry feelings. Your husbands and wives are not going to want to be around you because you're going to be angry and you're going to have headaches because of that detox uh, flu symptoms that your body's going to go through. But what happens with the supplements is it flips you into ketosis within 30 minutes with the accelerated keto and you get the benefit right away. But what is it? The ketogenic diet is based on a high fat, low carb and low sugar diet. But when I say high fat, that means that you could be snacking on your fat stores on your body. So you don't necessarily need to eat the fat because if you're eating the fat and you have weight loss goals, your body's not going to be burning its fat. It's going to be burning the fat that you're eating. So saying that, many people also stick to the dirty keto and incorporate foods that fit into the category of low carb, but are unhealthy. And it's been proven that, that some of these foods that we're going to talk about in a minute are more inflammatory and cause more damage to the DNA than actual real sugar and carbs. So what are those things? Number one are the wrong oils. So what you need to start doing is looking at the back of the labels and looking for the oils that are being put into these even quote unquote keto snack foods or low carb snack foods, the protein bars, even uh, soups from the whole, whole foods and these healthy um, organic restaurants are using oils like canola oil, rice bran oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, soybean oil, 
cottonseed oil, safflower oil, uh, grapeseed oil, and peanut oil. These are all extremely inflammatory. And not only that, but they are more toxic than sugar. They stay in the body for over a year. The expert that was talking about these oils said they would rather see you smoke a pack of cigarettes a day than eat these oils. And that's how damaging they are to your body. So I recommend using organic cold pressed olive oil. You should have that in your kitchen. Butter is great, ghee is great, avocado oil, duck fat if you really want to use it, and coconut oil. Those are all great oils to have in your kitchen. And when we're trying to make changes in our diet, you want to crowd out the bad foods and the bad things by putting the good things in your kitchen so they're easy to use and they're in reach. Um, are we going to be perfect with this? No, at every restaurant they use these oils. If you can get away from them or ask them for to cook in butter instead of canola oil, that's great. Uh, most restaurants will do that. You have to be careful with olive oil in restaurants because sometimes they cut their olive oil with canola oil because it's cheaper. Um, so all of these things are just to keep in the back of your mind. Do you have to be perfect? No, but we want to cut out the wrong oils as much as possible. Now, remember they're quote unquote keto because they're fats and they're no carb, but these oils are inflammatory. Um, the next is fake sweeteners. And I'm going to, um, divulge my, <laughs> my issue with that situation. I've been addicted to fake sweeteners um, since I was young, uh, very young. Um, I always knew sugar was bad. Well, if sugar's bad, then, then Splenda's great, right? Well, Splenda was my drug, drug of choice through my 20s. Then I learned how bad that was for me. It is poisonous, causes leaky gut. Um, it term, turns to formaldehyde in your body. So as soon as I learned that, I'm like, okay, well, I got to get the Splenda out of my body. And I switched to Stevia. Well, up until about two weeks ago, I probably used more Stevia than all of you put together. And that was my drug. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I eat very clean, but I was addicted to stevia. And I didn't realize how addicted I was until I got off of it and my taste buds came back and go, and I now can actually taste real sugar. It's amazing what happens when you do that. So with that, what stevia does, stevia is probably the best alternative out of all of them, but in high quantities, and I'm sure if a lot of people are addicted to um, sweetened drinks, whether it's Diet Cokes or even the drinks that have the stevia in it, like Zevia or your iced tea with stevia. If you're a person that's drinking coffee and then, um, you know, diet sodas or iced tea all day, and then you have tea or something at night, you're using a lot of these fake sweeteners. The stevia backs up your liver. Now, what do we know about the liver? Anyone doing the Ascent Diet Cleanse knows that you've got to love your liver. Your liver is your, your, your extra child, your adopted child that you need to take care of because it's your liver that breaks down the fats, that's, that um, converts your thyroid hormones from the inactive to the active thyroid hormones. What's your thyroid for? Your metabolism. So these sweeteners could be backing up your liver, slowing down your metabolism, slowing down your thyroid. Okay, so maybe you don't have weight to lose and you don't care about your thyroid health. Your thyroid is the master endocrine um, gland. That's going to be triggering brain fog and um, how much energy do you have to physically go do your workout, to physically work, to do your, be productive during your day, the, the exercise of life and dealing with stressors. Your liver is everything. Your liver being backed up can't process the fat. So here you are trying a higher fat diet maybe and getting off the carbs. Well, if your liver's backed up, it can't break down the fats. So all of these things are like a chain reaction. And that's where you will find after you do a liver flush 
and start cleansing your liver through a, the cleanse, you are going to see everything works better and more efficiently. There's less water retention. Your kidneys are not as backed up because your kidneys and your liver work together. All of these organs in Chinese medicine are connected and you want to keep all of them functioning and all of them clean. Our ancestors did not need to do a liver flush. Why? They weren't doing Stevia and Splenda. They weren't drinking alcohol in the, in the amounts we are. They were not eating the processed foods of the standard American diet. They were not being exposed to environmental toxins. They were not having to detox from the, the, the toxins in, in the vaccines that we are exposed to, whether you've had it or whether you've not, we are all exposed. All of these things are things that our bodies are not meant to deal with and be bombarded with at such a high level. And that is why it's so important to gently detox the body on a daily basis and then also with the liver flush three to four times a year. Okay, so we want to get the fake sweeteners out of our diet as much as possible. You will be shocked at how your taste buds change. Now, do you have to do it perfectly? No. Cut it down to 80% and then 90 and then 95. And then you just kind of get it out of your diet. I can tell you, I am having zero stevia at the moment. I've got a cabinet full of a ton of it. If anyone wants it for free, I'm ready to get rid of it. Um, so there you go. The next thing I wanted to touch on is dairy. Um, dairy is ketogenic. A lot of people can handle it. A lot of people can't. It is inflammatory to the body. So if you have pain in your body, if you have acne, if you're constipated, all of these are signs that your body just may not like dairy. And there are certain dairies that are worse than others. If you actually get raw dairy, it still has the enzymes in it to break it down. And most people who are lactose intolerant can do raw dairy and they've got raw cheese, raw milk. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen a raw yogurt but I know Greek yogurt is more tolerable than regular yogurt for some people. But if you're hitting a plateau, cut out the dairy and see how that goes. Number five is the diet soda. And the reason is, is not only does it have the fake sweeteners, um, but it is extremely acidic. That is why you've seen on um, YouTube where they take the, the diet Coke and they can actually get the rust out of some metal because it is that acidic. It takes 32 cups of alkaline water, not even just regular water, to um, equal or balance out one diet soda with the acidity. And when your body's acidic, it leads to a breeding ground of viruses, bacteria, candida, and other foreign pathogens. It breaks down your bones. It causes osteoporosis um, because what happens is when your body is acidic, your most alkaline um, substance is calcium. So it takes the calcium out of your bones into your blood to alkalize your, your blood. So that's where the acidity is really damaging and it leads to chronic pain, accelerated aging, a compromised immune system, of course, and it actually will increase your sugar cravings. So what happens with the, the artificial sweeteners, all of them, is it raises you, you have a blood sugar response and an insulin response, okay? Even though there's no calories and no real sugar in it. But then when you pair that fake sweetener with a, a meal, say, of carbs or real sugar in it, say you're having a hamburger with the bun and you have your diet coke that response in your body for the blood sugar and the insulin is going to be higher than if you were just to have the hamburger with the bun then the next time you eat just the hamburger and the bun your blood sugar is going to have that over exaggerated response because it's been conditioned with that diet soda or the, the artificial sweeteners. 
So you're, it's like that Pavlovian response that you learn about in um, psychology where your, your body is responding to more than what it needs. That will lead to prediabetes and insulin resistance. Now, what's the great news? is just with the, the Ascent Diet Cleanse in 30 days, you are going to be reversing your um, any prediabetes or insulin resistance. I've gotten a lot of people off of their insulin medication and their doctors don't know what they did, but they're happy with it, which is amazing because what diabetes does when you flip that switch and you go into diabetes and you start shooting yourself up with insulin, that is actually making the disease worse. That's like telling an alcoholic, go to the bar and drink more alcohol to cure yourself. So the, that's the wrong way to do it. So we're getting people off of their insulin medication, lowering their insulin and their blood sugar, stabilizing. What this is also doing is going to get rid of cravings, right? So cravings, food addictions, food disorders, our eating disorders are all connected to rise and falls of blood sugar. So as soon as you stabilize that, the, the cravings and that mental, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about food all day and the, the obsession goes away. So what do you want to do first? This is rule number one. And remember I said, you want to crowd out the things that you, you don't wanna feel deprived. So you don't tell an alcoholic, stop drinking and don't do anything else. You tell the alcoholic to stop drinking and go learn to ride your bike, go, go swimming, take on a new hobby, drink um, your, your mocktail at 3 p.m. instead of your vodka soda. You want to have something else to reach for. So what is that? Protein, 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 protein. What I did when I first started the ketogenic diet was I focused on eating fat and that was not the right thing to do. When you focus on protein, it has the amino acids that triggers a hormone called CCK in the gut. And that hormone goes to your brain and says, okay, I'm good. I've had plenty to eat. I'm getting all the nutrients that I need and all of the amino acids that my body needs to survive. So the job is of from the protein, your proteins give you all those amino, amino acids. The, the protein gets broken down into the amino acids in your liver. That's why your liver is really important. important. And then the, the liver says, oh, you know, so-and-so worked out really hard on her legs. Her glutes are sore and those glutes need the amino acids, A, B, and C. I'm going to put those together and send them to my glutes. Okay, so that's the way it works. The proteins come in as a piece. It, they're broken down into the amino acids. Then they're put back together by the body and sent to the place they need to be sent to to work. The proteins are what tell the body, I have triggered that CCK. I've had enough to eat and I'm good. My appetite is satisfied. Tell me anybody, I would love to know if you've ever binged on ribeye steak. Have you ever had like seven ribeye steaks and said, oh, that was amazing? No, but maybe after you had a half a ribeye steak because you were told you wanted to lower your calories and then you started taking a bite of Ben, ben and Jerry's ice cream and then you finish the carton right? So does that sound like, and it's because the sugar is triggering the brain to say, oh, I'm hungry again. Okay. So it, it's telling the opposite. The sugars and the carbs actually trick your brain in telling you you're more hungry than you are. And they're absent of the nutrients. So your brain is still searching for more nutrients, more nutrients. So it'll just keep eating until it gives you, it, it gets the nutrients it's asking for. Now you might be saying, well, what about the vegetables? Well, all of the nutrients that you think you're getting from the vegetables are in a higher density in the wild animal protein. That is true. Kale, 
blueberries. There's a great book that's the um, Carnivore Cookbook by Maria and Craig Emmerich. They've been guests on my podcast and they lay out a chart of some of the nutrients. I have the cookbook. If anyone local would like to borrow it, happy to loan it out. Um, but it lays out the nutrients of, you know, beef and beef liver versus kale, blueberries, and some of these superfoods and how they are, the meat proteins are actually more dense than the vegetables. And it's a great, um, a great source to look at and get your mind around it. Am I against vegetables? Absolutely not. I love vegetables. I love to eat them. But do I look at them for my nutrients? No, I, I enjoy them for the taste, for the crunch, just to go with my, my food. But when I sit down to eat a meal, I have my protein. I typically have a vegetable and, or a salad. I always eat my protein first because 99% of the time, I don't finish my vegetables because my brain has gotten what it's needed. And that eliminates a lot of the bloat and the stomach issues that a lot of us, especially women, have um, from these vegetables. Some of the healthy foods like broccoli, garlic, onions, kale, spinach, cauliflower, those either have oxalates in them or they're in the sulfur category. And I will be posting more um, articles about those two groups. The sulfur group is the kale, the spin, uh, the, the cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, onions, egg yolks, and, and garlic. Those are the foods that if your body can't break down the sulfur, it backs up in the liver and then you'll get bloated, gassy. If you have a reaction to garlic or egg yolks, those are two foods that most people are pretty aware of their reaction to. That means that you should stay away from all of the sulfur vegetables until, until your gut is healed. The foods like spinach and kale is in this other group as well, almonds spinach and almonds are the worst offenders in the oxalate group but all most nuts in general uh, macadamia nuts and peely nuts are the best nuts to have but all the other nuts are inflammatory they are also full of the oxalates oxalates are the worst offender of everything that we're talking about because they take years to get out of your system and what they cause is arthritic pain joint pain, a slow, a slow metabolism, slow thyroid, because these oxalates are like toothpicks and they like to jab themselves into your tissues, into your joints, into your um, kidneys. They cause kids, kidney stones into your thyroid, slow down your thyroid, cause Hashimoto's. Um, they get into the joints and just stay there. Um, when you're detoxing from the oxalates and you eliminate them from your body and your body says, oh, well, now I'm in the clear, I can actually dump them, you might have um, a skin breakout. And that's sometimes something that I went through. I actually passed a kidney stone. No fun. All of you moms out there going through labor and delivery, I can tell you a kidney stone is much more painful to pass than than a baby. <laughs> so um, I don't recommend it, but I do have a kidney cleanse to help that process go quicker and break down the stones, just as the liver cleanse breaks down the liver stones. And we will get into that later on. But um, the oxalates are what causes those. So once again, everybody needs to get rid of spinach and almonds out of their diet. Those are the worst offenders. The other one, foods that have them in it are berries, um, kiwis, um, chocolate, and there's an article on my um, blog about oxalates in general. Some are a lot worse than others. Once you start clearing most of them and cleansing the liver, can you eat them again? Yes, you know, in moderation. There's something called the tipping point. So your body can handle just so much. I mean, maybe you can have a square of cheese, but not the block of cheese, right? And your body can, can handle a certain amount of these things, but not a lot. But I just want to bring these all these things up to you so that you can see, um, kind of keep in the back of your mind, like, oh gosh, I'm not feeling great this morning. What did I have for dinner last night? 
Now, the beauty of the Genius Insight app, which most of you have heard me talk about, it's an app on my phone that it has um, a way of scanning your body through voice technology and telling you what's going on in your body. You can actually put in it these libraries of all the different oxalate foods, all the different types of protein, dairy, the different types of dairy, all of these foods, and it can tell you, gosh, that's what I'm reacting to right now. And it can tell you, for instance, right now, I am allergic to blueberries. Did not know it until I pinned it this week. I'm fine with strawberries, raspberries, all of the other berries. Blueberries, it causes skin rash and I could not pin it down. And that is one of the triggers. And blueberries have oxalates in it. Blueberries are full of amazing nutrients. So who would have thought? But that Genius Insight app tells my me what my body is trying to tell me and, and, and confirming what I intuitively know. And it tells me, Sarah, you can handle feta cheese, but you cannot handle a glass of milk. You can't handle blue cheese or mozzarella, but you can handle goat cheese and maybe some Greek yogurt. And for protein, you can, hand, you can handle uh, beef, right now, but maybe not two weeks ago when you were fighting E. coli. So that's where the Genius Insight app comes in if you're at all interested in that because it, it can give you a day-to-day -day, um, reading of what's going on. So we've talked about protein a little bit, but what I wanna stress with the protein, there are some wrong proteins. Chicken, which is the lean white meat that everyone has is, is their staple, it can cause uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, brain diseases. And how does it do that? It has what you are what call what you call amyloid proteins. These amyloid proteins don't break down into those amino acids like I mentioned before. They stay in a truncated, misfolded protein. And why is this happening? It's because of the crowded environment these chicks and chickens are growing up in. And you think, oh, well, I eat all, only organic chicken. It's all chicken. Organic, non-organic, doesn't matter. Now, if you love your chicken, you can switch to duck, Cornish game hen, but I really recommend bison, lamb, deer, elk, wild fish. All of the wild animal proteins and wild fish are really a lot easier to break down. The body is loving it. it it's nutritionally dense. There's no GMOs. There's, there's no um, grain or soy fed lamb because the lamb is all wild. Same with bison, it's all grass fed. You don't even have to ask if it's grass fed, grass finished. Um, it, all of these foods are, are feeding off of the good healthy nutrient food, not the inflammatory food. So here you are eating a chicken that's eating grain or soy to fatten them up. Well, if it's fattening up the bird or the cow, what do you think it's doing to your body? These things are inflammatory foods to the animal, just like it, they are to us. So ideally you wanna to stick to the wild animal proteins away from the chicken because those amyloid proteins in the chicken or conventional beef, not grass-fed, grass-fed, grass-finished beef is okay, but the truncated um, amyloid proteins get deposited in your tissues and in your brain and can lead to dementia and Alzheimer's. So then with the fat, what do we do with the fat? You fill in with the fat. You eat the fat in your prime rib or your ribeye steak or on the salmon or whatever. Do you need to dump a ton of butter or olive oil or avocado in your meal? No. Um, a lot of people have our, our fat malabsorbed is what they call it. And what that means is that they can't break down a lot of fat. And that's because their liver's backed up. I used to be fat malabsorbed. I can't eat a ton of extra fat on top of my food, but I can do it a lot better than I used to because I've cleansed my liver. And I can tell you that stevia was backing up my liver and causing fat malabsorption issues. And now I'm able to eat a lot more fat. If you are feeling nauseous after you eat a lot of fat in a, in a meal, 
that is a sign that you are fat malabsorbed and you should probably stick to leaner cuts of meat and cut down on the extra fat in your diet. So signs that you could be suffering from fat malabsorption, your stool in the toilet is light and it's floating or it's fluffy. You may have diarrhea, you're nauseous or feel really full after you eat. Um, back, bumps on the back of your arm, that's a big sign that you could be fat malabsorbed. You have acne because it's trying to come out of your skin, yellowish skin tone, a dry skin, edema, you're swollen in your ankles by the end of the day. Um, maybe you have PMS or PCOS. Did you know that PMS symptoms are not normal? None of us are supposed to have them. If you have them, then your hormones are out of balance. Did not know that um, until just, you know, this year, actually, I thought PMS to some extent was somewhat normal, but it's not. Um, and then of course, if you've ever had been told that you need your gallbladder removed, um, or that you have gallstones, that is a sign that you could be fat malabsorbed. So how are we supposed to do this? We want to be intermittent fasting. And I can't tell you because there's so much around disordered eating and food addiction in our world. A lot of people think that we shouldn't be fasting, that it will trigger um, disordered eating. And it's actually the opposite. What is it doing? Is it stabilizing your blood sugar and your insulin? And it's, it's giving your digestion rest. So you're either in rest and digest or let's go and move. And when you're not digesting food, the cells in your body are saying, okay, let's go do something called autophagy. And that's the cleaning up of all the diseased and cancer cells in your body, reducing the inflammation, dumping all the waste because your body has the energy to go into your limbs and your organs and cleanse and cleanse your liver to, in court, to do that, right? When the, when the body is digesting food, it's got to send all the blood and the energy to the, the stomach when it's time to digest the food and, and go to work with that. That's why when you're stressed out or when you're exercising, you don't have an appetite because your body's in fight or flight. It knows that it's not a good time to eat because it's not gonna have the enzymes in your stomach to eat. If you're racing off to a, a meeting and you're driving and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten in four hours, I need to eat. And you're shoving a meal down your throat while you're driving you're probably going to have a stomach ache because there are not enzymes in your stomach to break down that food. It's actually better to drink. Energy comes from hydration, not from food. Every single one of us, even my son, who's got maybe a 10% body fat, has got thousands and thousands of calories on his body to burn for energy. The energy comes from hydration and the electrolytes. So if you need energy, that's when you reach for your accelerated ancient salt. That's when you reach for the quintessential 0.9 or the Ola Loa. Those are all great um, su supplements to use for hydration. But the intermittent fasting promotes this insulin sensitivity and it is going to um, help reverse aging. Insulin resistance and toxicity are the two things that make us age. When we get rid of those, we are going to reverse our aging. So number one is to get rid of the insulin resistance. And it also is related to all chronic diseases, obesity, diabetes, um, arthritic pain, you talk, heart disease. Heart disease is not caused by cholesterol it is caused by carbs and sugar. The cholesterol is actually the fireman showing up at the fire. You're not gonna say that the fireman caused the fire, right? It's the carbs and the sugar that caused the fire in your heart and the heart disease. The cholesterol is there just to put the Band-Aid on the wound in your heart. So our bodies need cholesterol. Our bodies need cholesterol for our hormones as well. 
What insulin intermittent fasting also does, it normalize the ghrelin level, which is your hunger hormone, that, hung, that hormone that says, I'm hungry, feed me. And it increases the rate of human growth hormone. Um, it lowers triglycerides and the heart, risk of heart disease and reduces inflammation throughout the body, fights free radical damage, helps with your muscle mass and burning fat, um, and switches your body into fat burning mode. Now, going from a, a regular standard American diet and saying, okay, intermittent fast now, not easy because your blood sugar is still going up and down and is constantly hungry because it's dependent on the glucose to burn. That's where the accelerated keto comes in. The keto, the accelerated keto flips you into ketosis within 30 minutes. And so then your body's saying, oh, well, I've got thousands of calories on my body to burn. I don't need to eat right now. Let's go play. Let's go exercise. Let's go work. Let's also feed the brain some clean burning ketone fuel so I can actually think clearer and not have brain fog. And what else the accelerated keto does, it starts defatting the liver. So before you even do a liver flush, the keto is actually starting to work on the liver, get rid of visceral fat and get rid of fatty liver. And then what it's also doing, it's that spark for digestion to help heat up your, your digestive juices. It also has something called HMB that prevents muscle wasting. If you are a female over the age of 40, our bodies are prone to catabolism, which is the breakdown of muscle. It is really important to keep muscle mass on our bodies because muscle is linked to longevity. So with that, the accelerated keto is maintaining muscle mass while burning fat. Most diets will have you lose fat and muscle at the same time. And all you're focused is on the, the scale. We don't want to do that. We're focused on building our, our bones and our muscle while losing fat. And the accelerated keto will help you doing that. The Wild Lights is a supplement that also is an electrolyte mix. Um, and it has no sulfur or oxalate um, ingredients in it, which some supplements do, what other electrolytes. That's why I really like the Wild Lights and the Quinta Central 0.9. And then of course the Accelerated Ancient Salt because they're hydrating your body. They're detoxifying your body. They help with muscle cramps, the uh, mineralization, um, it helps with your adrenal function your lymphatics and your histamine response, any inflammatory response in the body. And also, did you know that salt can actually lower blood sugar? Salt can also be extremely helpful for your heart health. So the accelerated ancient salt, not regular table salt. That salt makes you bloated in the face, hope makes you retain water, that the accelerated ancient salt actually has over 62 minerals in it and it hydrates your body and your cells at the cellular level so that you are getting what you need but not retaining water. Next is the accelerodyne iodine. This is different than any other iodine supplement. Most iodines are toxic, but iodine can help blood sugar. It can help blood pressure but it also opens the pineal gland, which is your connection to God, to your higher self, to your spiritual health and whatever that means to you, but it opens up that connection. And it also feeds your thyroid, the proper iodine. Your thyroid is the bridge from your brain to your body. Okay, so it connects those two. It increases the physical and mental energy it also increases ATP production in the mitochondria at the cellular level. And that is true cellular energy. That is not the energy from the coffee or the monster drink. That is deep down in the cells, the energy that is sustained. And that's coming from the accelerodyne. It's kicking out the toxins that we are all exposed to, the graphene oxide, the spiked proteins, the... Um, all of the all of the other toxins in the environment, the GMOs, everything, it is going to start kicking those toxins out of the cells, 
just by supplementing with the, the Acceleridine, you're reducing your risk of breast cancer and most cancers by over 50%. Uh, it's really important. And we'll go into more about why the acceleridine is so different than any other iodine supplement. A supplement that a lot of you have not been introduced to is called berberine HCL. Berberine has been known to work just as well as metformin in lowering blood sugar, and the HCL helps break down the foods. You take it with your meals. It keeps your blood sugar low, um, especially if you have any carbs with your meal, and it also has the HCL to help break down the proteins and, and the food. Beta TCP is also another supplement that can help support fat um, absorption and help Oh my gosh, am I muted right now? Can you guys hear me? You can hear me, right? Okay. I just got a sign that it says I'm muted. I don't know why that's saying that. Um, anyway, beta TCP helps with the fat malabsorption, um, helps with the bile flow and the normal bile in the, the gallbladder. It is also helpful if you feel like you're having a hard time breaking down fats. Choline and inositol is another one that helps facilitate the burned of store fats and has been shown to prevent um, abnormal or excessive liver accumulation of cholesterol and triglyceride. And then P5P is one that also helps uh, support the, the breakdown of sulfur and oxalates. So that's another one to think about. But I also wanted to talk about the patches and where they come in. Some of the LifeWave stem cell patches really help you feel amazing as you're on this health journey. And it's the, it's the feeling of like, I can do this. And I was just with my mom right now and she goes, Sarah, you know that your patches are showing underneath your shirt. I said, yeah, that's because I'm gonna point to them during my, my podcast. Um, but these are the energy enhancer patches. And this is on your lung meridian. When I put them here, my um, workouts, my, my respiratory part of my workout, especially, I feel a boost in my energy. The energy enhancers help with digestion. They help increase caloric burn by 300 calories a day. They also increase ATP production. They increase that um, that uh, phase angle of the cell. The phase angle means the, the rigidity of the cell is improved. Toxins can get out of the cells and the nutrients can get in. That is a really important number to look at when you are doing, um, you, when you're looking for longevity. Anyone local and anyone that is doing the Ascent Diet Cleanse can do a before and after scan at a cent at for 50% off and let me know and I will uh, connect you with Heather because what's great is it can not only tell you your skeletal muscle, your, your fat um, mat loss, but your visceral fat and also what your phase angle is. It is a great marker to see where you are going with your 30 day cleanse or for anybody for that matter, if you're not doing the cleanse, but you're on this journey and you're doing some of the supplements and you wanna do it before and after, you can let, definitely let me know and we can get you in contact with the scent. So the energy enhancer is really important. The X49, Heather is going to be on the Zoom next week talking about her results. But I can tell you the X49 not only burns the fat on the body, but it increases muscle mass just without even the supplements. And it also is helping with hair growth. I've noticed a difference in my hair. My hair is continually not going gray because of the My Vital C supplement that is also connected to longevity and helping with um, reducing risk of tumors and the C word, which I'm not gonna mention, but it also helps with hair growth and with keep turning the gray hairs back to, to the original color, but the X49 is doing the same thing in a different mechanism. And so X49 is great for muscle strength and muscle building, fat burning, and endurance and recovery, and then also hair growth. 
The X39 is resetting your stem cell genes or resetting your genes, over 4,000 of them, back to a younger state. So we get to act as our 20-year-old self, reduce the inflammation, reduce the, 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 um, any of the ailments in our body, and take us back. And it also is going to make all of the supplements work better because we all know that our younger selves responded to anything we did, whether it was diet or supplements, better than our older, decrepit, aged cells, right? So as we are younger stem cell wise, we change our diet and lifestyle and we add the supplements in, everything works synergistically together. So the energy enhancer, the the um, X49, the X39, those are game changers when it when we're talking about doing the ketogenic or low carb, high protein diet better and more and more correctly. So with that, I was going to get into the leaky gut bundle um, because of how amazing it is as sealing that actual. Um, gut lining. Most of us are suffering from leaky gut, and that is caused by env environmental toxins, the vaccine shedding, uh, the vaccine in general, um, just be COVID. If you've had COVID, it is disrupting the whole gut and all of the organs. So all of this stuff is disrupting our gut. Our gut is where our hormones, our happy hormones are made. When you combine the mega spore, the mega pre, and the mega mucosa. The mega pre is feeding the good bacteria to proliferate even more. The mega spore is proliferating the right kind of probiotics in your gut. Most pro probiotics don't even survive the passage down into the, um, the stomach. The, the acid actually kills it before it can go to work, where the mega spore actually works on the, it's dormant until it gets to where it needs to go, and then it proliferates. Tracy uh, Cormack is someone that I interviewed on the web on the podcast, and she goes through this in detail. So that is a podcast that you can listen to and really dive deep. The mega mucosa it goes in and it seals the mucosal lining and heals that gut even stronger. So as you're intermittent fasting, you're using the leaky gut bundle if you choose to, to heal that gut even faster. And then all of these things, like we're talking about, oh, I can't eat these fats, I can't eat these vegetables, I can't eat all these foods, you are gonna start being able to eat them again because your gut's gonna be able to handle them. And I've had multiple people say, men and women say, gosh, that little pooch I had, it's gone. My stomach's flat. I haven't had that since before having babies and it's now back. That's how powerful it is, the leaky gut bundle. So when you, when you use that, especially and you incorporate the accelerated detox powder to soak up all the toxins, to reduce the inflammation in the gut, you really start feeling amazing. And when your stomach and your core feel good, your energy shoots through the roof. So all of these things are synergistic. They all work together. And if any of you guys have questions about anything I've talked about, you can put it in the Telegram group chat. And um, we will also be posting all of these live um, on YouTube. So you can share them with your friends. If you've got friends or family that need this information, they're not ready to jump into the supplements, share the videos. It's a great way to get them, get their feet wet. And you can also invite them to the group chats on Telegram as well. As you help share my information and my videos and my group chats, you're helping me do God's work. I'm only one person and I need you guys to help me as well. So that's the way you can pay me back. So thank you, everybody. I love seeing all of your faces and we will um, see you again next Monday, but I will see you in the group chat. Um, throughout the day, every day. Have a great Monday.